Do your studies at the Tularean Academy got you down? Well, we've got some budget tutors for you, so stay tuned. What's cooking, everyone? I'm Cal, and welcome to another episode of Knights of the Kitchen Table. Today, I'm joined by our newest member, Colton. Yep, I'm Colt, and I am so excited to be here. I watched his videos a, a few days ago, and this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yep, Colt, a.k.a. Colton. I use that name interchangeably, so don't get confused. <laughs> and believe it or not, he's actually my little brother, so. I am at that. And it's amazing. Well, he may be little, but his knowledge is not. We're going to bring you some budget <laughs> tutors today, which Colton is our resident expert on. Oh and boy. hopefully these will help spice up your next deck. So we're just going to go ahead, start off with our tutors here. Um, fair warning, they are predominantly in black and blue, although we will try and sprinkle in a couple other colors because they do exist and we find that to be important. All right, well, without any further ado, we'll just jump into our first one. So starting off the bat, we are in black with Final Parting. So that is a five mana, three and two black sorcery. It reads, search your library for two cards. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Then shuffle your library. And you can get this effect for $1.07. Which is amazing uh, because the text that it reads, we, we can tutor our threat and our reanimating card at the exact same time. Is that crazy? Yeah. So like, I mean, if you're pr probably budget, some people get like some of your cheaper old draws, like an Artisan of Kozilek or uh, Ulamox Crusher or something. Yeah, for that sure. That could be one of the cards you tutor. Throw that in your graveyard. And then my personal favorite is the Soul Exchange. It's just two mana, two black. So for seven mana total, that is kind of a lot. But seven mana, you can get your threat into your graveyard and reanimated in the same turn with just the one spell. Which is great, yes, yes. Um, I personally like the higher CMCs. Uh, they work better for me, but uh, the two mana CMCs are amazing. So for sure, keep that in mind. Yeah. Also, another point, this works really well with the incar incarnation cycle. <laughs> That's a really hard word for me to say today. So you like your brawn, wonder, and anger. That can immediately get it from your library and throw it directly into your graveyard where you actually want it. That's where it's gonna be granting haste, trample, and flying. So keep that in mind. Which is super valuable in this game, so of course. It is, it is a five mana tutor, and that's way more than we usually like to see. But we feel like this one is effective because it gets two cards into the zones you want. So you get one into your graveyard and one into your hand. Yes. And that'll bring us to illicit ship it, shipment. So it's a three generic with a black black and it's a sorcery and it has a casualty of three which reads as you cast a spell you may sacrifice a creature with power three or greater when you do copy the spell and then it goes on to say search your library for a card put it into your hand and then shuffle this card is amazing so when you play it for five mana you can sacrifice a creature with power three or greater which typically a, a creature with with a power of three it, it might be your typical throwaway card, you know, right? Mm -hmm. It could right? just be like a token, like a beast token. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you can just sack that real quick, mm -hmm. go search your library for two cards. Is that amazing? Anything. And uh, different than the other card, they go straight into your hand. Yeah, so in a way, it's very similar to Final Parting. So you're still five mana and you're getting two cards. Granted, this one does not put it into your graveyard. So if you're running a deck that doesn't necessarily want to be putting things in your graveyard, so it's not a self mill or a reanimation deck, this might be the card you're looking for here. Also, um, I don't know if we mentioned, you do get this effect for a nickel. <laughs> it's oh. literally five cents. So this Very is not gonna be costing you anything. It's gonna barely even count towards the budget of your deck. Yeah, and then the like Colt mentioned the casualty three sacrificing a creature that is not a downside even in the slightest in most decks sacrificing creatures triggers I mean draw effects it deals damage it causes other opponents to sacrifice things so I mean that's tack that on as upside that's all good stuff yes yeah, so all in all this card is amazing highly recommend it and that's gonna take us to our next card which is actually a series of cards it's the transmute cards so we really like these ones because regardless of what they say on the card, um, they have the transmute mechanic, which is usually one generic mana and either two black, two blue, or a combination of. So it's always three mana. And transmute reads, 
Discard this card. Search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Play only as a sorcery. So we really like this effect because, um, kind of like channel, it is an uncounterable ability. Yes, it can be countered, but um, it, it doesn't grab any card in your deck. Mm -hmm. However, whatever CMC the card is, it, it'll grab a, a card in your deck that equals that same CMC. So like you have a Demir House Guard and you want to play this in a blue-black Demir deck with, let's say, Orvar, okay? Mm. If you have Orvar, you can transmute three, discard him, search your library for Orvar, and stick it in your hand. I, I like these cards a lot. Yeah, so it's really effective if you have one specific card in your deck, whether it be a, a combo piece or a specific type of removal or, or it's a card that you know that you need to have in nearly every game. You can just find the transmute card that matches its mana value and that will tutor every game for that one specific card. Yes, so exactly. Not quite as good as like your vampiric or demonic tutors that can just get any card that you need at any situation. These are perfect toolboxy cards to get the card you need exactly when you need it. Oh, but man, they are so cheap though. This is why I like these cards so much. They are so cheap. It's great. Yeah, so you mentioned the Demir House Guard, so we'll just start with that one here. Go ahead and read that one, Cole. All right, so for a three generic and a black, we get a two, three skeleton with fear, and we can sack a creature and regenerate it with the transmute ability. Yep, so we like this one because it's a free instant speed sack outlet. You can always use those. So if you wind up not needing the transmute, you have a great sack outlet there. Another one we really like is Tolaria West. This one's actually a land and it enters the battlefield tapped and it taps for blue mana with the transmute. So this one's interesting. It doesn't have a converted mana cost written on the card. It's true. But it's a land, so it's technically zero. So this can tutor up non-basic lands. So if you have like an Academy Ruins or I love Dark Depths, get Dark yeah, Depths, Despian Stage, Vesuva, any kind of land that you need in your deck that can just tutor right up for it for the three mana, which is a very unique effect in blue. That doesn't come around very often. It can also, if, if you're playing way out of budget, this could get like your mana crypt, <laughs> but it can also get other uh, zero CMC cards. Uh, like if you're playing like a Cheerio style deck with Joyra, who just loves those zero cost artifacts, this would be a great one to tutor those up as well. Or uh, another idea, some blue cards, uh, they have landfall ability, which I think is kind of cool. Mm, so, yeah. you, so you can transmute to get like a fetch land if you have the money, or you could do like Evolving Wilds or something. Pop that down on the battlefield, tap, sacrifice it, go fetch your library for another card, and boom, right there. Yeah, so it can enable double landfall triggers. Great, Definitely. great ability. So This one will be a little more expensive. Talaria West does come in at $2.07, but it did see a recent reprint in the Time Spiral Remastered, which brought the price down from like $5. So it's like half the price as it was. Praise Asmore. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, so the next one that we have is called a Dizzy Spell. It's just one blue. So it's an instant card, and it has target creature gets minus three, minus zero until end of turn with the transmutability of one generic and a blue blue. So I guess like, I mean, if you really wanted to use it to lower the power of an attacking creature, you could, but the transmute is really well good. There's a plenty of really good cards uh, for one mana that you can grab with this card. Uh, so for one, we have a soul ring, which is great in I mean, any deck. You never not want a tutor for soul ring, especially exactly. in uh, non-green decks. So if yes. you're running this in like any deck running blue, this would be super good. Yeah, for sure, like in white or like in red, or for example. Yeah. Some um, of those colors that don't have very amazing ramp. Yeah, they can also tutor up some of the, the best removal spells in the game with like uh, Swords, the Plowshares, oh, sure. and Path to Exile. Exile. Yes, it's exactly. snag these as well. Granted, you only get those at sorcery speed, so it's not like someone plays a threat. You just immediately transmute and then grab your swords and play it all for a four mana combo. You'll have to do that on your turn, but it's good to grab it when you need it. So it's going to have that option. And that's going to bring us to our next cycle here, which is the Mage cycle. And they function very similarly. You've got a series of cards. They all tutor up for an artifact and that is of a specific mana value. So you have like our Trinket Mage, which gets a, an artifact of mana cost one or less. Tribute Mage, which gets mana cost two. Trophy Mage gets specifically mana cost three. And our Treasure Mage, that gets mana cost six or greater. And these yeah. cards, they range anywhere from 14 cents to about 84 cents. So all under a buck. Which is awesome. I love these cheap cards. These are great. 
it, it is very similar to transmute um but where like it'll if there's one specific artifact you need this can be pretty much a wild card that will go grab it so exactly if you need to get yes. that soul ring play that trinket mage yeah yes yes for sure and, and then you can save your transmute cards if you have them in the same deck mm -hmm. so like we said trinket mage grabs that soul ring really well mm -hmm. um the treasure and the trophy mage they can grab uh there's plenty of equipment and combo pieces that are two and three mana that they can tutor up really well. Yes, the treasure mage. Um, as we said, it can tutor up a CMC of six or greater, which is super awesome. It can tutor up your Blight Steel Colossus, which is a card that I absolutely adore. I love that card <laughs> so freaking much. Um, or like a Mirror Battle Sphere, or any kind of game ender. There's yes, plenty yes, of sure. um, artifacts over six CMC that, as soon as you play, it can just end the game, and Treasure Mage can get that right to your hand. Exactly. So. Exactly. Also, note these are enter the battlefield effects, the ETBs. That's right. So they're so, abusable, especially in blue. You can be flickering yes. or blinking these guys. For sure. And like a Gigan deck. Oh, oh my gosh, that. they're amazing. <laughs> yes. Or anything that's like sacrificing creatures and bringing them back to the battlefield. You get multiple triggers off these. That's probably the most effective way to use these. Mm -hmm. So it will take a little bit of like planning in your deck building to make sure you have um, multiple cards at these specific mana values to go grab. But I mean, when you're playing with budget, you're probably already doing specific technical tweaks to your deck to make sure it functions correctly. So and that's the mage cycle. So we're we're big fans of those. Yes. All right, which brings us to Signal the Clans. So it is a dual card of red and green. It's an instant, and it says, search your library for three creature cards and reveal them. If you reveal these cards with different names, choose one of them at random and put that card into your hand. Shuffle the rest into your library. So it's, this is a really cool card because it's an instant card, and it can tutor for any creature you want. For two, for two CMC. Three creatures. Yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, the other two, you shuffle it in. Unfortunately, yeah. So into your library. That random yeah, is kind of irritating, so you can get like the three best, and you only get one, but you don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But yes, you give yourself some sure. pretty good odds, though. Mm -hmm. Either way, you're getting something delicious. Something big and nasty, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And with it being red and green, oh, man, th there are so many creatures out there that are just high value. That, that they can go fetch for. Typically, the kind of decks that probably want to run this are just like the big stompy creature decks. Mm. And in those decks, it doesn't matter what you grab. Anything is just is going to work. So so really that shuffling the, the other two into your library isn't that big of a deal because you just want something big, whether it's like your end race forerunners or it's a spacing on big like a big red dragon like or, or that, or that. <laughs> anything yep. at these lower um power levels sometimes any any one of those could just end the game on the spot so the randomness can be a non-factor in the right deck so don't <laughs> let that deter you especially when this card's coming in at only 41 cents of course yes yes that's not so bad to pay for an instant speed stu instant speed tutor for only two cmc I'm still stuck on that Tomb CMC, man. That's just amazing. <laughs> that is pretty good. I mean, that's like Demonic Tutor level. So. Exactly. Exactly. That's pretty good. That's going to bring us to our next card here. We have Quest for the Holy Relic. It is a one mana, a white enchantment, and it reads, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may put a quest counter on Quest for the Holy Relic. Remove five quest counters from Quest for the Holy Relic and sacrifice it. Search your library for an equipment card, put it onto the battlefield, and attach it to a creature you control, then shuffle your library. And you get this effect for just the expensive, expensive cost of 13 cents. A diamond, three Lincolns. Wow. That, that's pretty sweet. So whatever equipment you have in your deck, oh my gosh, you can just remove five quest counters. You have to build that up first, of course, but I mean, just tune it for that equipment, put it on the battlefield immediately, and attach it to your creature. Dude, you know how much value that is? There is very little effects in, in Commander that can like, not only will it grab it from your library, put it onto the battlefield, it will also attach it to your creature. I mean, <laughs> you can't ask for anything more than that. I mean, there is the ever popular Colossus Hammer. It negates that a whole equip cost. Yes, it's only one mana to play, but it costs that, that large amount to, to equip it. Mm -hmm. Of course, a Holy Relic will just rip it from your library and slap it on the creature you want it on most. Or my personal favorite, I love Elbrus the Binding Blade. I'm always trying to throw that card <laughs> into decks. But it costs seven mana to cast that thing, so it's super prohibitive. 
Quest for the Holy Relic, though, just rip it right out of my library, slap it onto an unblockable creature, boop him for a couple damage, and then I get my Within Guard. <laughs> freaking 13 13 flying trample. That is crazy, guys. And I can tutor that up for 13 cents with Quest of the Holy Relic. <laughs> and it's, it's only one mana, so it can come down like turn one, which is a great turn one play, I feel like. Of course. So. Yes. Unfortunately, you do have to get five quest counters on there, so you've got to be casting five creatures. So like, just getting tokens isn't going to do the job here. So it, it is... You probably want to be casting some smaller creatures. Mm -hmm. but, but usually, I mean, this is obviously going in an equipment deck, but a lot of equipment decks run some very low mana value creatures. Yes, yes, for sure. Because you're going to be pumping them up. Like Wylath. Yeah. Of course, like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be for sure. So Quest of Holy Relic, if you're looking for a way to tutor up uh, equipments in your deck that are on a budget and not named Open the Armory, this is a great um, redundant effect to add to that. So we're a big fan of Quest of Holy Relic. Yes. Which brings us to Coveted Prize. So this is a black card. It costs four generic and a black. It's a sorcery. And it says this spell costs one generic less to cast for each creature in your party. Uh, your party consists of up to one of each cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. And search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. If you have a full party, you may cast a spell with, convert with converter mana cost, four or less, from your hand without paying it its mana cost. Alright, so, say what you want about the party mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I like to play this card is because of that. Because there's so many commanders out there that just have, incidentally, those kind of creature types. Whether it's a wizard, rogue, warrior, cleric. Mm -hmm. So check a couple of your uh, commanders um, with black and its uh, color identity. And see which ones just run these. I run a Marchesa deck personally, and I threw Covered Prize in there because she's a wizard. So if, when she's on the battlefield, Covered Prize will always cost four mana. Which is like diabolic tutor mana. For sure. Yep. But if you have any other creature in your deck or on the battlefield that is a cleric or a rogue, then it's going to drop the cost by one more. And that's bringing us into Grim Tutor territory. And that's a card that's played in Commander. <laughs> For sure. Yes, sir. All so it requires very little effort to get this down to a very reasonable mana cost. Yeah, yes, it does. And the lower CMCs are always coveted. It's an always coveted prize. <laughs> <laughs> Wordplay. <laughs> so, I mean, the the bonus here that if you have a full party, that's probably not going to come up very often. I mean, great if you do, but if that's not something you're shooting for, I wouldn't let that you know preclude you from playing this in your deck. So, I would just take a peek to see if you're running these kind of creature types, especially if your commander is one of these creature types. I would definitely take a long, hard look at Coveted Prize. Of course, and then to, to our last one of the video. Mausoleum Secrets. I don't know how you want to pronounce that. <laughs> Mausoleum Secrets. Mausoleum, yes. It's a, it's a 90 cent card, so still under a dollar here. It costs one into black. That's demonic tutor mana value there. But this one's an instant. So you can cast this at instant speed. It has undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Oh boy, oh boy. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with this card, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading this card, I have an old Stick Fingers a commander deck, and I am very excited to throw this card in it. Oh yeah, Stick Fingers would love Mausoleum Secrets. You pay wh whatever CMC you want for his X, stick like what, like three creatures in your graveyard? That already includes every card in your deck with three CMC mm -hmm. or lower, and throughout the game, you're going to be putting creatures in, in your graveyard regularly all, all through the game and I just ups it and ups it so it's like it's definitely it, in the end game it's definitely a demonic tutor card it's amazing yeah I mean obviously it's it has some downsides to demonic tutor like you uh, you do have to jump through a couple hoops you can only get a black card and you have to make sure like you That's have the creatures in your graveyard of course and the big thing to me is you actually have to reveal it I don't like giving my information to my opponents. Demonic Tutor <laughs> doesn't or force you to reveal it. Mausoleum Secrets will. But for 90 cents, I can get on board with all of those. <laughs> yes. The, the other thing I wanted to mention is that at instant speed, this grants you so much more flexibility. That is an upside. So I definitely would recommend playing this on like your opponent's end step right before your turn. Mm. Tutor up what you need to make sure you have an explosive turn as soon as you untap. 
Great idea, great idea. Which is something that Demonic Tutor will not enable you to do. It's going to put a two-man tax on anything you, you tutor up. Mausoleum Seekers can neg kind of negate that tax by casting on an opponent's turn. Oh, yeah, because that uh, Demonic Tutor is a sorcery, huh? Yeah, it's sorcery speed. It is. Yes, yes. So definitely, if you have a deck that can uh, utilize that graveyard, whether it's like a self-mill or any kind of reanimation strategy like Old Stick Fingers, this is a great card to substitute for Demonic Tutor. I totally agree with that. I'm excited for this card. I like all these cards. I'm going to have fun with these. Yeah, so de definitely take a long, hard look if you run any decks that could use these kind of effects or can mitigate the hoops you have to jump through. And it, it'll, ready, it'll be ready for you to cook up some disaster for your opponents. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're going to have fun in that crock pot, man. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. Consider dropping a like and subscribe and praise Asmore. And as always, bon appetit. <laughs>